Hello everybody, welcome to the Lilith series. I'm your favorite astrologer, Adama, and I'm here with Humble Bloom. This is Danielle and Solange, and they are a cannabis activist collective based in Brooklyn, New York, and they also do a lot of events in Manhattan as well. So we're here to just talk to them about what Humble Bloom is all about, just their backgrounds on how they got to this space, um, what their relationship with cannabis and the cannabis industry is, and how they're helping to progress the democratization of the cannabis industry. So, hello ladies, did I get your intro right? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so my first question is for each of you, what is your background, where are you from? Well, I grew up on a small farm, so if we're gonna go way back just for a moment, um, which I think, like for me, that was a really special time with connecting uh, with myself and mm -hmm. nature because we didn't really have anything else on the farm. There was no television or toys or neighbors. Wow. <laughs> so where, where about? Strasburg, Virginia. Oh wow! And then, um, then had some trauma and loss, and ended up growing up in the outskirts of DC, and there. Um, you know, I was blessed to kind of be taken in by my first art teacher who continued to teach me about plants and like holistic living and um, being in nature. We would sit in tree stands like while her husband went hunting and um, go foraging and, you know, it was very much community based kind of activities, but also just like connecting to the city and like Baltimore and Richmond and D.C. and like early 90s raves and yeah. experimenting <laughs> with plants and substances for dealing with trauma mm -hmm. and also um, enjoying altered states of consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, in that time period, I had like lots of different kinds of friends. I um, harbored runaways. My mom almost went to jail, you know, it's like mm -hmm. already kind of like just there for different people in my lives that had very different lives than me. And, um, you know, my boyfriend actually went to jail. He was selling weed and um, we dealt with like a year and a half of, you know, being incarcerated, then like living within a facility, then living out. Mm -hmm. And even then though, I never thought about like cannabis as, as a tool for, um, changing lives or healing lives. It was just something that was a part of my life. And then coming to New York, studying art, um, producing art, getting into nonprofit work. That's when things became like more organized and thoughtful and intentional, I guess. And um, I worked in nonprofit for like a decade, started an artist residency, then went deeper back into my plant life and launched a raw juice business. And, okay. um, and started to study plants for their medicine, their nutrition, and their ceremony, and um, studying in different communities and indigenous communities, and um, and studying under like a curandera who had a clinic, and the, but helping her to start a neem farm by connecting her with other local like hydroponic farmers, things mm -hmm. like that, because there were no resources and people do love to go on their, their like medicinal tourism, but those communities are not receiving that support. And now here we are, um, you know, with cannabis and um, a lot of opportunities to, because of, it touches on so many public policies to flip a lot of paradigms. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like a moment where, you know, this love and support for people and plants comes together and for the work that we do in a creative way, be creative still. Mm -hmm. So Solange, tell me how you, your background, how you got to New York, mm -hmm. if you're from New York, mm -hmm. tell me a little about yourself. Yeah, so um, my family's from the Caribbean. My mother's from Grenada, my father's from Dominica, family extended throughout. Um, that area of the world, and I grew up in a white Jewish neighborhood, Newton, Massachusetts. Um, I felt like went to school in an environment where I was one of the only that lived Me in too. that neighborhood, <laughs> yeah. which is really formative. <laughs> yes, yeah. you yeah. are always othered, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter because in our school system, we had the Metco program mm -hmm. in which um, kids from the inner 
cities, mostly black and brown, were bused into these more privileged neighborhoods that had great education systems. Mm -hmm. So for me, being one of the few people of color or just black people in general living in Newton and then attending mm -hmm. schools and showing up in my complexion um, was very transformative and very much, I think, I didn't realize then how it set the stage for so much of the work that I do now and that I've done throughout my life. I've mm -hmm. always been a bit of a bridge builder and a connector of different cultures Gemini. and people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so whether um, marrying a guy from Europe who grew up in an island in Spain, um, really traveling and being always that person that stands out and sticks out, um, but doesn't even doesn't want to intentionally, mm -hmm. but yeah. just is always there. Mm -hmm. um, and um, <clears throat> So growing up in that environment, I was very fortunate to have a very strong mother who always wanted me to be involved in everything. She was like, you're going to figure out what you like, what, you're, what, you, what you like, what you're good at, where you find your power. Um, so she had me singing classical music, singing in church, ice skating, being a Girl Scout, um, playing sports, captain of all three sports, always in leadership roles. She was like, no one, you're not gonna be anyone's cheerleader. You're going to be a leader. You're gonna be the person that people listen to and that people really find um, connection to, you know, like they hear themselves in your voice and what you do. Um, so that was deeply instilled and also realizing as a black woman, I always had to do better than everybody. Yeah, yes. <laughs> because no matter what, well, realize that outside yeah. of our outside of this us, inhabiting yeah. this body mm -hmm. is that my mom used to tell me mm -hmm. uh you have to be 10 times better than everyone mm -hmm. else when rebecca and sarah and you are hanging out <laughs> yep. um they're gonna point at you and you're the one who's going yep. to time out yep. those girls are gonna get rid of it so i didn't really do yeah. much experimentation with drugs or anything like that i had a very mm -hmm. um restrictive in that sense um upbringing but then very open into creativity, into expression, into mm -hmm. let's make yourself shine and come out. And I was also really shy, so which really? is like extreme. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> glasses, braces. <laughs> um, had twin brother and sister that were much more fair skinned, and they had each other, and they were four yeah. years younger. So for them, they were able to move in the world together. I was very much in a way a black sheep. I was yeah. the dark skinned yeah. one. They were the lighter ones. I had to go out and do it myself. They had to kind of follow. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, I must succeed. I went to undergrad at Wellesley College, a women's college. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. So that was kind of even the formation, yeah. I think, of the beginning of my activism in a way. It was, you know, solidarity, putting women first, um, mm -hmm. realizing that we are a community and no matter where mm -hmm. we come from, whether we're black, white, differently abled. LGBTQAI, mm -hmm. whatever background we come from, there's strength and power and numbers and collective. Mm -hmm. um, and so being educated at Wellesley and then going to Emerson College afterwards to do broadcast journalism, I think there's where, again, I was able to hone in and what mm -hmm. my voice is and what the voices of others are and how do we work together mm -hmm. as a community to amplify each other to get over all the shit that we have in this world. Mm -hmm. um, I was at Emerson when the war in Iraq started and I thought I was going to be like Oprah I'm gonna have my own like TV show and talk yeah. to people and be on the radio or and I was doing that and then I just realized how corrupt those systems were oh yeah um, and racist and totally I mean, racist. Is racist all of it yeah, yeah. It's all the same. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and just societies by white men for white men and their mm -hmm. advancement um, and not all white men privileged rich white men mm -hmm. um, so really working on how do I topple those structures um, after graduate school, um, I started working with a law firm called Foley Hat Hoag, which um, one of our family friends, he was one of the senior partners there, and he was working with Barack Obama on the Hope Fund. Um, the Hope Fund was an opportunity to raise money for other Democratic candidates um, mm -hmm. throughout the country. So there was a steering committee of about three junior people, including of me, so like two white guys and me, um, under 25, and then these super powerful lawyers that were in the Northeast that were raising all this money for Obama to do the work he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. is pre, this is pre-election? This is pre-election, yeah, okay. so he was still just a junior senator. Mm -hmm. um, and so having these opportunities, and I never will ever put down people without thinking about how they help to elevate me as well. So mm -hmm. this is rich, white, Jewish man who yeah. is like, I want to give this girl a position and a seat at the table. Um, and That's what it, it 
That's what involves as well. Co-conspirators, yeah. allies, people yeah. who are here for you. Because yeah. I always say we can't sit in circles of sameness to make right. change. Absolutely. And they understood, yeah. and he understood the power of the diversity that he was bringing in. That yeah. he was helping to lift me up, and in turn, like. I'm able to see this man, Barack Obama, who's doing amazing Zooming things and him. get inspiration. Yes, several Ooh. times. <laughs> Baby Barack. Oh my God, I almost yeah. died. Baby Barack. <laughs> Super fine. Ooh. Oh my God. And that was different salons. There were no feathers and the, the, <laughs> it was literally like pearls and straight hair. Because your pearls like, <laughs> like Oh my God, baby. Like, totally, totally, totally. Sorry, I had to ask. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> honey, it's okay. <laughs> so yeah, to like Aww. meet Barack, have all these influential men who believed that you know you have something you should be here you should be a part of the conversation I really mm-hmm. think um, empowered me um, mm-hmm. people will ask like who are your mentors like who are the people like besides my mom and some of these other folks who are mm-hmm. just like real everyday people who are like oh are coaching a basketball team do you want to be my assistant coach you know yeah. all of these white men with privilege yeah. in Newton who are like hey girl we're lifting you yeah. up so that's wonderful that's amazing <clears throat> that that's was a lot of that and then I think always just having a mixture of things that I'm doing I've never done just one thing so I was working in nonprofit for years I started at Wellesley College after grad school came back and started working there mm-hmm. then went to work for a company that did a nonprofit that did inner city economic development making scaling inner cities whether it's like Roxbury or mm-hmm. it's Brooklyn making sure that there aren't food deserts and really caring about the humans that are living mm-hmm. in these places. And food desert is when there's no healthy no food. access to healthy food. Mm-hmm. You have to it's go like to bodegas. Bote- yeah, or bodegas yeah, or, exactly, yeah. or king yeah. fried chicken or right. whatever it is in liquor stores. It's like, how do we develop yeah. and give these people access so you're not paying, you know, $3 for one roll of toilet paper, you yeah. know, because that's yeah. the way it is. It's There's no access. So democratizing for them in that way. And, um, <clears throat> and then continuing, finally moved to New York about 12 years ago, at that time following a guy. Um, we all did and, it. But it's <laughs> great. It I'm super grateful. <laughs> Not no, no, judgment, no right. reasons, <laughs> no sadness there. Um, but continuing to do music, continuing to do nightlife, mm-hmm. um, continuing to do nonprofit, working specifically for another popular so I went from women's education then to <clears throat> inner city work then to LGBTQ AI mm-hmm. work then to arts and education working at Harlem School of the Arts and working at a cancer organization before that so I really got to work with different affinity groups and understand mm-hmm. like how they show up in the world and how I can be again a bridge and a conversation point with them to populations that might not understand them as much yeah. and doing a lot of fundraising and communication work um, so Gemini yeah. <laughs> Gemini is about not only connecting people mm-hmm. but carrying mm-hmm. out a real message and a yeah. true message like yeah. the truth yeah, yeah totally here for the truth Just to everyone right <laughs> truth talking yeah. all the time um mm-hmm. and then after nonprofit, i started my own company that was about entertainment um and creating spaces for artists that don't get the benefits of nepotism um you look at the uh, entertainment industry oh my god in new york and beyond it's everyone's daughter everyone's son everyone's mm-hmm. best friend it's like how is this 23 year old artist mm-hmm. at the guggenheim or mm-hmm. at it's because it's someone's daughter not mm-hmm. because she has any kind of talent. so much of that yeah <laughs> and so i'm yeah. like i don't believe in that so yeah. literally doing everything from like graphic art exhibitions with creatives that are from Sweden to shows with folks that are from different countries in Africa and in Europe and Mm. just doing jazz and little small things where these people get to shine um, and putting together showcases that were focused on women Um, and then started then joined a non not a nonprofit a startup called Live Gray which was really about connecting people in the workplace and the future of work Um, and how do we make it so that teams work better together so that organizations are structured better how do we get diversity, equity, and inclusion on it? What's mm-hmm. org design look like? So, so much of that, um, I think, really helped me catapult in putting this all this stuff together, whether it was the political and Absolutely. the advocacy side, yeah. the music and the art, the caring about different subgroups within a group yeah. to come together with Danielle and do Humble Bloom. Yeah, how did you guys meet? Mutual friend, yeah, yeah. Mutual. friend Helena. And then you just bonded over the... Well, I attended one of her experiences. I attended the She Show, and I think I attended a couple other events, Mm -hmm. and I really loved what she was doing. And Life at Work, too. And Life at Work, and I had just... I think closed my company and I mm-hmm. was just like, Live Gray was amazing. I really loved the experience that 
Solange had produced, and I was like, hey, are they hiring, you know? And she's like, nah. And I was like, I, was like, look, I, okay, I, was like, I don't know. I was like, we're going to work together. Oh, I wasn't like, know. we're going to be friends. Yeah. But she was like, you're crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and I was like, no, no. I didn't know how, but yeah. I knew I was going to work with her. And uh, <laughs> Humble Bloom was founded on a new moon, yeah. the Aries new moon. Do you yes. want to like in a ceremony? How how did how did the name come about? Why did you found Humble Bloom? Why on that day? Well, it was inspired by a friend. I will say that a friend brought us together in order um, with the idea of like venturing, making, products. making a product, venturing into the cannabis space, and. Um, we initially were think product focused, but mm -hmm. we always had our pillars of building community because that's where we both came from. Mm -hmm. And um, and we had our values, um, but the barrier to entry in creating a product was oh, yeah. just like, okay, this isn't happening, but we dove into creating community because that's what yeah. came naturally. Mm -hmm. And um, I also think that we were very intentional with the founding of the company and yeah. what it was. I think a lot of people are like, oh, cannabis, money, which it's not. Um, yeah. But, oh, cannabis, money, I'm going to make a product. You know, mm -hmm. we sat down, we wrote words, we came up with what is the essence of this thing mm -hmm. that we're creating? You know, mm -hmm. how are people going to be tied to this? How are we going to be able to walk out in the world and express ourselves using this organization as a vehicle? Um, and in doing so, it's like, all right, no, we can't put the cart before the horse. Like, let's right. build mm -hmm. community. Let's That's find family genius. before we put out yeah. product. And especially we were mm -hmm. thinking of doing product in THC space and doing it more underground and not doing CBD um, mm. and just being like a wellness brand. You yeah. know, we so were like, some... right, there's so there's many so connotations many. and things attached to that. Yeah. And for myself, like coming from having a raw juice and herbal and tonic and tincture company, where, you know, I had learned from incredible teachers, but also partnered with Opening Ceremony, and Stephen Allen had shops in the Lower East Side, and Jean George, and the Mark, and Mercer, and seeing a market, like, become trendy and commodified, and, mm -hmm. like, have innovation with the capital that comes in, and the lack of education of people. You know, I worked with small farms then, and now some of the small farms have hemp farms now, you know, which yeah. is cool, but... Um, it was like, no, we need really a different approach. This is going to be a really saturated market mm. and there's going to be a lot of products out there and there are. So, um, you know, for that, we always like we're, we're taking our time, you yeah, know, totally. and our, Sorry. our brand is really aligned, is value driven and purpose driven mm. and passion driven. And prosperity is also a lot about the community mm. that um, we've been able to elevate, you know, and bring together and um, inspire, yeah. you know, and it's through brands that we can also make a lot of change. Yeah. And changing um, the way there's, so just going back to you, you know, your boyfriend was incarcerated for marijuana. Yeah. That's a huge, I mean, it's a history of marijuana and cannabis in our country and just people being incarcerated for having still incarcerated. Yeah. Yeah. Or still are for their whole lives. And then now it's legal or wow. becoming more legal or becoming more accepted. What are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you are you guys taking action mm -hmm. on that? I mean, first of all, this plant has been with us for 10,000 years or more. Right. It's yeah. intrinsically intertwined with our evolution. We have an endocannabinoid system. Um, we don't have other systems. I mean, we have a neural transmitter system. We have other systems, but not like an alcohol system or a coffee system, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's been, because it's so intrinsically intertwined with our our medicine and our ceremony, it's been the easiest tool to wield. And in America, I mean, throughout the world, but in America, I mean, it's just the veil for racism. And um, it wasn't until I worked in cannabis that I understand um, the systematic oppression through legislation. Mm -hmm. And that's why we actually have an incredible opportunity here is because of the laws mm -hmm. and the, flat, the, the fact that we can you know, through voting, change things, and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and recognize, like, okay, you, you, 
this has only been here because of racism. Yeah. You know. Also capitalism. And capitalism, capitalism is inherently racist. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's definitely about yeah. controlling yeah. capital for a small group of white dudes. Yeah. You because can't, now that it's yeah. getting more I mean now what it's are they really it. Now yeah. it's like venture capitalists, mm-hmm. all of these hedge funds mm-hmm. are investing. In right. So they have CBD, to take a CBD, look at it. That, yeah. And in some way that's like a weird I mean, it's awful what has happened over the past couple hundred mm-hmm. years. I mean, a hundred years here, but you know what the British did, what the French. Mm-hmm. It's like it's throughout the world, right? And um, people go to prison for life in other countries. Yeah, yes. they, you like can have death Thailand or yeah. Asia, yeah. So um, you know, it is like an interesting time where like the plants are giving us an opportunity to save the people. Yeah. You know, and to really look back at our the injustices and mm-hmm. the and the you know, the industrial prison complex, like all of these things, like if half those, if half the people are there for minor drug convictions and half of those are are marijuana and 90% are black and brown people, well, if all those people come out of jail, like, what do we need that place for? You know, like, what is this for? It's not feeding their pockets. Yeah. Yeah. And even just the drug industry, what are your thoughts on, not drugs and like but big like pharma. big right. pharma and I that's should what say. I was gonna say yeah, it's more than right. it's more than just a veil of racism. It's a veil. It's literally just inequity. It's mm-hmm. like how do we keep these power restrictions and systems of oppression mm-hmm. that have to do with classism, mm-hmm. that all these other isms and like like people who are disabled, everything. How do we make it so that they do not have access to this mm-hmm. healing, connective? plant you know so it's it's not just black and brown people it's veterans it's Mm -hmm. people who need this plant medicine to function normally yeah Yeah. and then don't have the money to do it Mm -hmm. it's like they try to talk about recreational versus um Mm -hmm. medicinal and for us it's like it's not one or the other it's not hemp or marijuana or cbd or thc Mm -hmm. it's one plant it should it's all for all of us Mm -hmm. and we should be thinking about it it's like all these people who did not have access to what our systems are of healthcare, they've been using this plant already to deal with depression, to deal with anxiety, to deal with the microaggressions that this world constantly throws on you Mm -hmm. just for embodying, looking like you or me, Mm -hmm. or, you know, coming from lesser means. It's like, this is how they were able to deal with these things. And now, as we're going into this white market, this legal market, where are the prices falling? Who will oh, actually be it's able to expensive. purchase these yeah. plants for their health? Um, when and then you, the quality as well. Exactly. Because all these bigger companies hopping on it, mm-hmm. then they're producing crappy. Exactly. And it goes beyond supply. Well, just, that's the way. There's no yeah. actual, there's no, like we talk about regulation and definitely I think cannabis is the most highly regulated industry of any industry currently. Yeah. But even with that saying, the business practices that are traditional that this that you get rewarded for, you know, mm-hmm. whether you're making all your products with plastic bottles, there's no yeah. penalties for doing bad. People who no, do bad yeah. and cut corners are rewarded by making more money and not getting taxed. And so it, it's like more than voting, it's like we've got to get in there and be a part of the legislation and these systems to make change. You know, people should be rewarded if they're using things that are recyclable, they are using yeah. things that can be broken down and reused, repurposed, refashioned. Well, I mean, our, go- our president doesn't care. No. no, like Europe is like farther ahead in terms of rewarding, and you have to realize yes. it's that behavior. But yeah, yeah. So it's like how do you make energy? Crap. All these different yeah. and these voting industries again, that have taken, vote. you know, that have led the way, and why you know hemp had to go being produced in China. Like we no longer have yeah. the machinery and things. We don't have the cotton gin for hemp, and these things happen because President So and So's brother had you know a tree farm, and it's like let's stop growing this mm-hmm. plant that first of all root system is like the size of a tree yeah. right in a shorter period of time takes more carbon out of the air Fact and does. like can become you know paper oil cement mm-hmm. like it has over two hundred and fifty thousand uses like it can become so many things and it's just because certain people in control have the money and the power and now as we're legalizing you it's like they're also kind of peddling mm-hmm. one to make sure that there's not equity in the space and they're also peddling so that those big players can just move into this industry mm-hmm. and take over so whether it's like fashion or construction mm-hmm. or anything technology yeah. you know they're all just trying to push back so that they can get their grasp on it you know yeah. alcohol is already getting in there like they're all in yeah. there so 
what would be like your recommendation for say, uh, you know, me, let's just say me, I want to get into investing in the cannabis industry or start to support localized farmers that are, you know, doing great things and providing mm-hmm. great product. Like how can I do that? What's like a good first step? Well, right now, know that we do have the bill coming up, right? And so la- this time last year, we were also, um, you know, advocating for an equitable, fair, and regenerative mm-hmm. program. So I think people could pay attention to that and be mm-hmm. calling in and, and letting their their local congressmen and senators know that what they're supporting mm-hmm. and what we would like included in the bill. And then it's your simple everyday mm-hmm. life. And it's, you know, for us, cannabis is the conduit for bigger conversations, not just about this plant and like it's those decisions are you supporting small businesses like are you supporting local businesses Mm -hmm. are you doing as much yourself in your home for yourself like do you need to buy shit you know like Mm -hmm. can you make that face oil yourself or or whatever and then like being sure to check out what companies you really support because Mm. um there's shit coming in from Alibaba you know like you don't really know what's in there and it's like you should yeah, Make sure so it's vetted. I think yeah. how you can support for sure is definitely just do your research, figure out who's owning what, and then like the power of your dollar is bigger than Absolutely. you know. So yes, if yeah. you want to support small farms, figure out what small farms yeah. are in mm-hmm. your area. What are the small farms yeah. in New York? It's in pretty New York, easy upstate, to look up. Just yeah. Google CBD farm New York. <laughs> you yeah. will you will find them and you will see whether or not they see have the owner's products. face. Yeah. See, like, yeah, it's like you can yeah. take time to do this. There are so many women, young people, older yeah. folks that are doing native people. There are so many companies you can support. It's like, just don't be lazy. And mm-hmm. I think that's that's kind mm-hmm. of the message for all. It's like, you need to be conscious in your consumption practices. Mm-hmm. You need to be conscious about what you're purchasing and why and who you're purchasing mm-hmm. from. It's like, you can walk into MedMen and support a failing, racist, egocentric, like, capitalist asshole. Or you can go online and be like, oh, look, there's this brand and they're made in Brooklyn by these young folks that are entrepreneurial that care about the environment and they're making this product right here and my carbon footprint is less and I can go to an event and support them and I can buy the product Mm -hmm. and you know there's it's just being a little bit more thoughtful and and it's we spend so much time scrolling through like Instagram and looking Mm -hmm. at random things if you really want to make a difference you have to be invested so take your time stop pay attention be aware and use your power for good yeah I think people forget like literally your dollar is a vote yeah Yeah. so not only should you go to the polls but yeah be conscious and mindful every day when you you know it's like why are you doing this yeah you know why do we do the things we do and like i think people live through their days just so blindly like yeah okay i'm getting my coffee i'm doing this i'm doing that just follow and like you know i think it's just asking like being intentional yeah this kind of leads me to my next question. How do you guys stay grounded and zen in your Sex. city? <laughs> Are you sure you're not a Scorpio? <laughs> you're, you're going through all the signs. She could be all of them. I am all I'm of like, them. Everyone has every sign in their chart. Yeah, yeah. So it's true. Yeah. Yes. Um, so how do I stay grounded? Uh, I think I take a lot of time for myself. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in a specific thing. It's like I'm not doing yoga or meditation or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. It's just like a rest and restore movement because beyond humble bloom it's like i'm booking now a new venue or a yeah. venue in what the venue? east Shut berlin up. oh yeah <laughs> booking yes. at berlin yeah. in the east village you should come by i'm definitely gonna come by it's yes. like right close to me it's yeah. so yeah and it's a beautiful space so it's like i'm putting all these pieces together in order to survive in new york yeah um yeah. as a single woman without kids without anybody it's just mm-hmm. me yeah. um but i say without that even real and then i'm like that's not true i totally have a village yeah. of incredible humans and angels that support me and help me survive but um, I think for me in order to get through the madness there's a lot of alone time Um, there is I create intentional connective experiences for folks whether it's at a place like Frequency Mind or you know come on over to my place or let's all go do X together Um, also creatively um, singing in the Resistance Revival Chorus um, has been almost spiritual for me, um, being in a circle of sisters that are advocating for change through Mm -hmm. collective creative voice Mm -hmm. um, has been transformative and uplifting and helps me also stay grounded. Mm -hmm. It's like there's real action and power in using my voice in this way with a group of people. And then, yeah, also sex. I think (laughs) that (laughs) 
having the opportunity to express and have share your body and your spirit and energy with somebody intentionally um, and make bigger connections through that and actually shift stuff within you. Um, I think we've come to a culture of people, you know, it's like whether they're sharing partners and have a million different people or, you know, I'm not doing anything. I'm closing myself off. I believe in moderation of all things. Um, and after coming out of a long-term relationship, it's been an opportunity for me to re-engage with myself through other, through motion with others. <laughs> I love it. You know, oh. so. And it's also a workout. Yeah. It is a workout. Yeah, it's actually yeah. like legit I mean, calories. Oh, yeah. When yeah. you have like a two day yeah. marathon. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't have to go to the gym. It's fine. like, what this is? Yeah. And I was like, wait, what was that? Everything's yeah. sore. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Danielle? Oh, I'm like, do I? I mean, it's wild because we get into things and I think I go on steam, honestly. Like, mm. I am driven by, like, the energy of the product projects you know so much that you don't realize like you haven't rested in a long time yes, and yeah. so generally after and then you know I don't have much time to take a break to myself you know I come home and it's like a mad hustle with kids of like you know dinners and you know I'm cooking the mother-in-law's like what you you cook you actually cook I'm like yeah, bitch. I fucking cook. <laughs> well, I thought you worked too much. I thought I'm like exactly. Yeah, you I do mean, I worked when it, I yeah. put those kids back down to bed. So yeah. I love when women doubt other women, which is like the most frustrating yeah. thing. But um, uh, which I experienced from the mother in law but we're not married uh mm -hmm. so I don't know what that's called just the woman who's on the, the back woman, sometimes yeah, yeah. but uh <laughs> grandmother of your children yeah. <laughs> <The> grand <laughs> but, grandma <laughs> yeah you know and I think it's just trying to be really present in the moments also like when I am with my kids and it make mm -hmm. it enjoyable you mm -hmm. know that I'm teaching them and watching them grow and like feeding them and nourishing them and then I do I host a lot of like gatherings at my yeah, home I love them They're I know awesome. right yeah. so I gain a lot of energy from from my friends and people by creating safe space people you know come to me come to us a lot and share a lot of things that are personal and helping people just still like restores me somehow giving more yeah. restores me mm -hmm. um but then I crash I really do I mean I just like clock out and I don't talk to people for yeah. a couple days or a week you know generally after a project it, you don't realize how exhausted you are until you are yeah. until you get sick you know kind yeah. of and I see that happen with both of us a bit yeah. um, that you know we are pretty fierce and like we bring people together and our energy is moving and like yeah. um, it doesn't really stop and then even more time we're like let's keep going she's hosting a party I'm like I'm a go ride yeah. or die like I, even though I'm yeah. exhausted we just had like what some of it yeah the, we had their first event we had the opening like comedy night and then she was hosting and oh what you oh yeah wow. we went to the band the two of us were insane we're insane yeah. 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 i think you texted me i was like girl, girl no one came with us we, we were all excited she was like i'm doing it. i was like why'd you do that like, I don't know. and she's it's like well, i need to be up like, and yeah. then she's like we'll just bring the party with us and Not everyone else was like no, i mean no. there was a squall <laughs> there was like a snow oh, squall that, was that day. day. No one was trying to that go was anywhere. Weird. Yeah, yeah, it was the craziest day. I drove. I was like, mm, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. But yeah, I also think dance. That is something Dancing, that, yeah, yeah. like, I think Love dance, sex, dance. all of that similar. It's yeah, like natural sex. movement. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just getting out. out there and letting your body flow. And, and then gratitude practice. Gratitude. I think for me, that's something in yes. the past year that I've really Same. stepped into mm -hmm. is like stopping the people who have supported mm -hmm. me at a random party or just at a hang and being like, I'm so grateful that you're in my yeah. life like you give me this that and the other and I hope that you realize how important you are yeah. to me that is something that I didn't grow up learning like that's something yeah. that is newer and mm -hmm. it really does feel great to tell somebody yeah. I'm grateful for you gratitude is happiness this. yeah gratitude it's joy. Is love it's joy. and joy mm -hmm. and recognizing beauty love and joy and like um I mean for me also I don't have family here so I have a village that helps me with mm -hmm. my kids they're still yeah. in the night you know at mm -hmm. people's houses yeah, even to come here you yeah. had to with what yeah something. I have to yeah, always coordinate childcare. Yeah. I watched someone else's kid last night yeah. you know and so I mean that gratitude and we really do have an amazing community of people who have supported us I've never felt this much even though like for instance like having the artist residency that I ran there was community and supporting people and helping people and nonprofit like get access to education and recognition mm -hmm. opportunities there's communities but like 
this has been really different and like seeing people come out and like just believe and yeah. trust and and I think it's different when you're doing something in the image of somebody else's organization like yeah. you're never truly going to be able to Absolutely. feel that connection yeah. unless mm -hmm. that connection is deeply rooted in the foundation of the organization and when you go into a yeah. big organization and you're like mm -hmm. okay I'm adding and now I'm a part of this culture it's very different than I founded this this is our intention yeah. and we're creating Child, essentially. yeah this is yeah. our yeah. baby we birds. care yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really and I think Live Gray the organization I was at before we started this that was one of the only places I felt that where yeah. you're like okay we check in with each other let's yeah. sit together intentionally and use prompts to be like if you really knew me you would know and then talk about what's going on yeah. in our lives it doesn't mean we all have to they, be people besties people rarely do that at like they don't work. do that at work no, exactly yes. and we were talking yeah, about the future cold. of work so I think bringing yeah. that energy into what we are doing here and naturally that just coming from us as individuals yeah. um, is it really does find this kind of community this energy where people want to give to you you yes. know like and that's yeah. what's been totally. they see how hard you're working you they're give, like you're giving then you get people back also and, back, yeah. and they're they're getting mm -hmm. like you know I think also what we're doing that's different is like confronting resistance differently mm -hmm. where like as humans we're taught our brains are developed in a way that we have like we're either fearful and fighting or, or fleeing right yeah. and fight or flight yeah. yeah and so now you know we're not aggressive with our experiences mm -hmm. where we cross pollinate in a way that brings lots of different people together mm -hmm. so that there can be lots of different perspectives and people can enter in in different ways and it's not it's not aggressive you know yeah. it's one that is just giving a new way of, of being, a, a human way of being, you yeah. know, and, and people are really responsive to that. And, um, yeah. that's been beautiful. And I think just leading with collaboration as yeah. our like mantra, it's like yeah. collaboration over competition. We're here to like, it's like anti-capitalist. Right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. It's like, yeah. what money can you give me? Oh, well, right. <laughs> no, so yeah. then we'll figure it, we'll figure no, it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We're like, what money can you give you us and help support? Yeah. They're yeah. like, yeah. Oh, yeah. nothing. Okay. And we're like, okay, well, you know what? There's a some some way you, Everyone's got gifts. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll figure, figure out what you can get. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So. so what are some great events you have coming up 2020? We are deeply in the planning yeah. stage. Um, I think one of, one of the biggest things for us in the past year or calendar year of 2019 mm -hmm. was really um, proof of concept. It was, this is what we're able to do as mm -hmm. this dynamic duo that is taking cannabis and jumping in. Yeah. Um, it's like, this is all the different experiences we can have. We've been so blessed to have residencies at the assemblage and at the That's where we are Trail. right yeah. now. Oh, Thank you. So, <laughs> so yeah, to have these residencies in which we can be, explore and be creative and they've actually given us space to do that you know yeah. so we're very yeah. lucky to have that and I think then being able to welcome community into these beautiful spaces yeah, so absolutely. we were able to create almost different programmatic pieces um, throughout the course of this past year in these mm -hmm. two spaces mm -hmm. as well as go out and do things whether it was like Columbia Business School or you know field trip to Astor Farms um, mm -hmm. and the Logic Blue Lakes it's really now is the time for us to shift from let's mm. just produce for production's sake so that people know and now be more intentional and be like okay mm -hmm. speaking of capital we need to make it for this to be a successful venture yeah um so Absolutely. instead of just that's, that's going grow. yes yeah. it's like now next steps we want a team we want to be able to have a product in the world we would mm -hmm. love to have a location we'd love to do all of these things that really shows humble bloom blooming yeah. you know and flourishing um and at this point it's we're in this deep moment of okay who do we want to partner with intentionally mm -hmm. who's coming to us and asking mm. us to produce on their behalf using what we've already done um so it's like let's line up these clients yeah. and then let's also create experiences with people that are partners already that we've worked with in the past who now yeah. are like oh let's blow up this relationship let's yeah. make it bigger let's make it mm -hmm. a multiple engagement over six months yeah. a year um so that we're contracts, doing baby. contracts yeah. And yeah, so we Sounds know that the money yeah. flow is coming in and eventually, yeah, we want to have a product out in the world yeah. that yeah. is reflective of us in the community and the people we want to serve. It's so smart that you've built the community first. Mm -hmm. um, they have nothing to do with cannabis, but into the gloss, mm -hmm. similar yeah. model mm -hmm. where it's okay, community first. It's actually mm -hmm. put out content that we believe in and now 
oh hey glossier and yes. yeah i work in beauty yes. so i'm like that's like the shining yeah. beacon of like mm-hmm. you can literally start something right. and it's just nothing can become a multi-billion right yeah. Yeah. yeah you don't come simple out with a packaging bunch of yeah. people trust you here's your one thing this is what you mm-hmm. need we've solved your problem yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we're thinking about that and of course there'll be other things that will pop up but really like focusing on like a solid like solid contracts mm-hmm. and what products we want to produce mm-hmm. so exciting so, yeah. uh, 2020 is a very pivotal year i'm sure yeah. it'll be mm-hmm. exciting for you guys maybe some moon ceremonies oh yes maybe love that connecting back to our moons yeah the moon it rules moon. femininity and the mother and it's very interesting you guys are more receptive in your approach and that's moon energy is being receptive and empathetic to needs versus Mm -hmm. capitalism which is like i don't know saturn yeah (laughs) where it's like delay and difficulty so it's very good energy Mm -hmm. so where can we find you guys if we want to follow you subscribe comment yeah. Well, I love that we were talking about legislation earlier. You should go to our website, mm-hmm. go to humblebloom.co, humblebloom. mm-hmm. um, and there there's a take action um, mm-hmm. header, and you can go there and download a letter and figure out who your legislators are mm-hmm. in New York to send awesome. them a letter we'll about, that. yes, yes, about yeah, making this. Time. So now is the time. Share it with friends. Cost mm-hmm. nothing but a stamp, and or you can just attach it to an email to your legislator. It costs, costs mm-hmm. absolutely nothing. Can you and call? call? And call in. Yeah. Call. Those calls are important as well. Yeah. So do both. Yeah. Is there like a script? We, yeah. there's, there's a letter, so you can, okay. you can paraphrase, cool. you don't have to read that entire letter, so the letter you can send, but also on the website we say, like, what we are here to do and gotcha. what, what we want to do collectively. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, we'll be at updating yeah, as well. Yeah, we'll be doing stuff this yeah. first half of the year as mm-hmm. we go into Aries. Yes, <laughs> Aries your season. That, right. Mm-hmm. It's and, good, good and to, like, get running that. Instagram gives yes. us Humble website, Bloom Co. on Facebook. Instagram. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sign up well. for our our e-newsletters yeah. on the website yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. well come check us out yeah, yeah. come <laughs> to if you're local in new york or ever in new york and yeah. have it to coincide with an event you should definitely come yeah and yeah. if you have a farm you want yeah. to visit yes. you know we're, we're doing our like planning this year and are looking at a couple different farms of where our next yeah. retreat will be so generally at the end of summer towards the beginning of fall when it's harvest time we would love to bring everyone out and yeah. and share some knowledge some plant knowledge cool well thank you for watching this is danielle and solange and humble bloom bye thank guys you. bye, bye. <laughs>